I am one of the louder, more progressive voices in Indonesia. The way Indonesian people think and uh, their opinion on certain matters to me makes no sense. We're called influencers for a reason. Pu Absolutely. All, all public figures by definition are influencers. The, the difference is that I'm not afraid to be canceled as much as I am afraid to be deported. That, that's uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Bule Go Vlog. You've been asking to have finally another female guest, and we found a very special one, a very controversial one, I would say as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Inda G. Ah, and the crowd goes wild. Yes, I forgot to put on my head. Because they are paid my, to do so. My, <laughs> my headphones. This is a little bit too big. I'm so sorry. Can somebody please make this smaller? I have an extra small head, which means I have an extra small brain. Is that what they say? No. Uh, depending who. <laughs> I mean, you get, like, when it comes to hate comments, you get it. You get everything. Yes, absolutely. And, and especially, you know, for now that uh, is everything is online, people don't have filter. Because I guess that if they would have to tell you in person, it would be a different story. Oh. Everyone is so brave, you know, oh, keyboard warriors. I can't remember what the term is called, but basically it's that a lot of people become a lot more aggressive and a lot more hostile than they would actually be in real life, given the exact same person, given the exact same situation, because you hide behind. Number one, it's the uh, you um, the bravery that you get yep. behind the screen. You hide behind an uh, anonymity, anonymity. That's such a hard word to say. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of other. Factors, yeah, and you, so. you have no consequence. Or at least there's the the illusion of having zero consequences, which is weird <laughs> though, because it's actually similar to what happens to people while driving. Even though there's just a little bit of metal and, and glass between us and the other person, we become so much more aggressive when we drive. And we say stuff when we drive that we won't, wouldn't really say in person. Uh -huh. Interesting. I don't have that experience because I can't I can't drive and I don't drive. But yeah, I, I think uh, from the stories that I've heard from my friends that do drive. Yeah, I, like, actually, ever since I came to Indonesia, I haven't driven. I haven't I never drove in Indonesia. I never drove on the wrong side of the road as mm -hmm. you guys drive. But when I drive, I'm super aggressive. Like mm, I see. I see. Yeah. But in the, I'm, I'm very interested because you are, are taking uh, social media by storm by being uh, because, uh, of course, every time I interview someone, I I need my team to tell me more about them because I don't speak Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, but I've been told that one of the things that makes you so interesting is um, that you're very controversial. Yep, that's right. Uh, I, I remember when I interviewed uh, Cristo. Emmanuel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's, and I started asking me a few questions, a few like uh, uh, funny question, but to, to put him on the spot, it was like, don't indaji me. That's what he said. Don't end it, Jimmy. Yeah, like you're you're becoming no, putting, like, putting you in the hot seat. Exactly. Don't put me in the hot seat. Oh yeah, no, I do love the hot seat. <laughs> you're, you're becoming a, a whole lingo now. Yep. Don't end it, Jimmy. Don't pull an end it, G. So, so, so is that a choice? What's a choice? Like a, a stylistic choice to put people in uh, uncomfortable positions? I don't think I put people in uncomfortable positions at all. And if anything, you know, I invite people from all different walks of life and from all different belief systems and opinions of the world. Now, bring them on the show and, you know, it doesn't matter how much we disagree. I'm still I'm a very amicable person and I'm very polite. Um, I don't think I, I think I don't I don't put them in uncomfortable positions. What I do host on my show, however, are uncomfortable conversations. Mm, okay. And I ask uncomfortable questions and I put out uncomfortable statements that a lot of people clearly have a very hard time reconciling with. But I, I feel, though, that the uncomfortable conversation, even though they are uncomfortable, they're necessary. Absolutely. Because okay. especially in, in, a, in a show like you, like yours, when, when you speak with the respected people in society mm -hmm. and famous people is, is, mm -hmm. is very interesting and is important because they're the trendsetter. They're the one that guide uh, uh, what uh, the, the people and the country thinks. Yeah, we're called influencers for a reason. Pu Absolutely. All, all public figures by definition are influencers. And, and it's interesting for me to, to hear because, of course, 
some opinions that might be very controversial in Indonesia, they're not necessarily controversial in Europe. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, despite you being a white person and me being an Asian person, I feel like something that you and I have in common is that we both are predominantly raised in Western culture, right? With yep. Western values. So that's something that you and me have. And so I think it is very interesting from people that were raised like us with like Western values. Of course, you more so than I do because you're actually from Italy, right? You're actually from the West. Uh, but like the way that I grew up, I guess for context for people that maybe are not familiar with me, I think the reason why people see that, oh yeah, she adheres to a lot of Western values. The reason for that is because of the way that I grew up here in Jakarta. Sure, but the caveat being that I went to an international school that was very much, you know, international schools tend to be, despite the name international, they lean more Western. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's really been a byproduct of my education. And then on top of that, I moved to the United States at the age of I want to say 18 or 19. To be honest, I can't remember. Um, well, uh, you're still very young, so you must have been lived too long in the United States. No, no. I came back like end of 2021. Anyway. Okay. So I was there for like what, four or five years. So oh, well, you're I, I thought you were younger. Oh, you thought how, how wait, how old do you think I am? I thought you were like 22, 23. Yeah, a lot of people think that. I'm 27. Okay, nice. Yeah, 90, I'm born 97. Um, wear sunscreen. Makes you look young. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I should have wore it for years. I, I think it's too late for me, but mm -hmm. that's a good... Especially Italy. It's hot over there. I know it. Anyways, yeah. So, you know, I think it's very interesting when people that, you know, come to Indonesia and it's like, you know, their values and beliefs and just like opinions of the world, worldviews that... I, I think to people like us, it's just like, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, no shit. Like that is, that's, that, that's correct. And then you come over here and it's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, for example, give me an example of a, um, of an opinion that you think in the West is completely normalized while in Indonesia is still taboo. I think, okay, the, maybe like a safe one to play with here. Um, <laughs> okay, I appreciate. Yeah, no. We're I, using the safe ones. Yeah, no, because if it were on my show, like I'll. I'll say whatever, right? but if it's on the, your show, I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh no! Don't, don't, don't worry. Like the, the the difference is that I'm not afraid to be canceled as much as I am afraid to be deported. That that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, see, you and I have that in common because I don't mind backlash, but legal trouble, I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, I think uh, a very general example would be like individualistic values, right? Okay. Because the main difference, but. Well, one of the main differences between West and East are individualism versus, uh, I want to say, uh, individualism and collectivism. Even though now I'm trying to think, Italy is Italy more individualistic or collectivistic? It's indi individualistic. Individualistic yeah, yeah, still, absolutely. right? So I think things like, for example, like when you are above, maybe not above a certain age, but after you graduate college, for example, like there's this notion that, you know, you're an adult, you should be like independent for yourself. Oh, absolutely. And, right, right. Move out, move out of your parents' house. Like that's a very common thing. And then you come to, you know, you know, other parts of the world and it's like, no, you're still a child. You still live under your parents' roof up until like you get married. No, yeah, that's, that's very S different. Stuff like that. Stuff like that. Yeah. In Italy actually is, is, is weird because Italian men are very spoiled by their mom, where mama's boys. Mm -hmm. And so by European standard, we move out of the house very late, mm. but we are made fun of if we move out late. Like mm. society, and by society, I mean that even the politicians yeah. are making fun of like if you are, um, I don't know, 27, 28 year old the Italian guy and you're still living with your parents mm. and they call you like a, a, a useless person. Right, right, right. Or maybe even just... A more controversial example. This is something that's uh, very recently, because this is what, this was a clip that I posted very recently. Mm -hmm. Maybe like an, an example would be: I think in the Western world, there's less of this notion that like I'm obligated to take care of my uh, obligated to take care of my parents as a form of how do you say balas budi in in English? Like uh, like to like a thanks for day raising you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially in the U.S. In the U.S., they, yeah, they send them to retirement home uh, without even blinking. Which, which I don't, which I do not support, but I'm just pointing out the differences, yeah. right, in, like, cultural attitudes. Like, it's not, it's not something you have to do. It's something that you, you can do. You want to do. It, if you can do it and you want to do it. But, like, for example, um, I I lived uh, when I, I was raised, when I was raised, uh, my grandmother, my mm -hmm. my mother's mother was living with us. 
And many people were asking my father, why are you accepting her in your home? Mm-hmm. Like, don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which But I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, and between, I see both sides. And between the two, which one do you prefer? Like, do, do you, mm. you still have a, a more, uh, you were raised, uh, you, they raised westernized. you westernized. Yeah. So do you find it hard to accept uh, the Indonesian version, the the Asian values? That's interesting. I, I would say no. It's not that I have a hard time accepting Asian values, but I feel like there is room for both sides. By the way, absolutely. I think I, I think something that you know I'm, I feel very passionately about because of the international education that I received growing up. Um, everybody can learn from one another. Oh, for sure. Right. Every culture can learn from one another. East and West, we have a lot to learn from one another. And I think sometimes like what I'm seeing is that there is room for keep your Asian values. Right. But I think let's center it a little bit. Yeah. Right. And also taking into consideration modern context, which, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately to say, I think we can all agree on this. Indonesia in many ways, especially like within the realm of like social culture is still very much. It is left it's old, behind old school. I, old school, but then again, look, I I leave room to consider how like that's a matter of percep- per- perception, right, and perspective. To me, is now I've been living in Indonesia for six years, mm-hmm. and I lived uh, around the world. I lived in the U.S. I lived in Africa. I lived uh, in different countries in Europe. I lived in Scandinavia. Mm. For me, it's very interesting because Indonesia still, after six years, Indonesia, the way Indonesian people think. And uh, their opinion on certain matters to me makes no sense. <laughs> uh, and it's not even that it's wrong. It's just that it's completely different. It makes no different. sense. Exactly. Yes, I understand what you mean. But for other things, because I agree with you, Indonesia has a more old school approach. Yeah. Some things I I really agree to and I and I wish my country was less modern. That's, yes, exactly. Because when I moved to the United States, I saw things that were normalized in the United States or just things... How should I It's put like it? that's too much. You that's know? a little bit too much, you know. And where and then I take from my experience of growing up in Indonesia, albeit look, I acknowledge the fact that I didn't necessarily grow up like people can't really say that I'm an Indonesian, like in some ways, just because I wasn't raised in like an Indonesian context, cultural context. Mm-hmm. And I understand that, right? But at the same time, I did grow up here my entire life. I've seen things, and obviously there is a level of Indonesian culture that I am. I wouldn't say entitled to, but like, of course, I'm familiar with, of right? Course. So yeah, I go to America and it's like, yo, bro, like, I think this is a little bit too much. You know what we do back home? You know what we do in Indonesia? You know, probably consider that, right? And it's like, you know, there's the fine line between I, I where it gets controversial is because you don't want to impede upon other people's cultures and, you know, personal values and be like, you know, trying to change them, right? But then I think it's, I think when it comes to humans like humans we're constantly changing right we should be of constantly course. evolving it should like, be yeah should <laughs> emphasis on should then again i can't force you right but you know consider that you know hey yeah you you know keep your own values right but you know learn from how other people do other things you know other in other places and try to m- middle yourself more yeah i i think uh that is the problem with many societies for yeah. example the italian society is that there's extremist on both sides mm-hmm. while well usually the truth is in the middle, middle. Yeah. And, and and here's the thing the middle isn't sexy that is fair the that is middle fair. isn't interesting the middle doesn't get you views the middle doesn't get you views it doesn't get you votes it doesn't get you votes absolutely right people don't want to hear both sides are right especially these days people don't want to hear that and even saying that I think is in it in and of itself a controversial statement. It is. But that's the truth. I, like I don't know about Indonesia because e- even though I'm part of the Indonesian showbiz, mm-hmm. I there is the the language barrier, which so I I, I only get secondhand information. <laughs> yeah. But especially in the West, uh, like having common sense. Mm-hmm is a very underappreciated oh thing. yeah it's like oh yeah it's it's, it's not like people don't want normal mm-hmm. people want the crazy mm-hmm. on both sides mm-hmm. yes absolutely and the, but you said you came back to jacket in 2021 end of 2021 yes so you spent covid in the us no so it, it's more so here's where it gets complicated i came back in the mid i came back to jakarta i want to say early 2020 okay But I was still finishing my degree because I'm class of 2020. Mm, okay. And you know how in the U.S. we graduate May? Yeah. So I was finishing my last semester of college in um, Jakarta. And, I was working. And of course, was online. And, uh, 
I was working LA time from Jakarta. I was oh. miserable. I was so miserable. Like that was a really dark time in my life. I nearly killed myself. I'm not even joking. Do you think uh, in the US COVID has been handled properly? Ooh, see, I ooh, I do not feel like I am the right person to even comment about that. I, I don't know. And I think, you know, the answer that you get, it really depends on people's personal experiences mm. at this point. Like I think at this point, COVID is such a subjective matter that when you do try to find facts and figures, I'm not saying that there are no facts and figures, like there are objective facts and figures, but I think when you want to talk about the entire experience, like that definitely varies people to people. And I think yeah. region to region as well. Because oh, different different states. California had a different approach than let's say Texas. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. but also in Indonesia, like I I was in Bali and in Bali was handled I I I, mm. I didn't suffer at all. Let's mm. let's put it this way. Yes, yes. Um whereas and I'm I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure Jakarta and Bali, we had different ways of handling yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But talking about Bali, this is something that I cover often on uh, my social media platforms. Because mm -hmm. uh, nowadays it's, it, it's weird how sometimes uh, social media content finds you instead of <laughs> you looking for social media content. Now I became uh, like the voice of uh, calling out uh, crazy behaviors by bullies in Bali. Especially. Yeah, yeah. What... What do you think can be done? Like, if you were a politician, if you were in power, what if, would you do to to stop this pandemic of idiocy in uh, in Bali? If I were Bonilu, yeah, exactly. If you <laughs> if were, I were Bo which, by the way, mad shout out. I love her. I, I love her. Love, love her. I see this. I, I, I and I follow her on social media, and I see her in action, and just like my goodness, like the level of respect that I have for this woman and like how, like, I just, I, I have all my love and all my respect for, oh, for this woman. She's amazing. And uh, last time I, I talked to her, because mm -hmm. uh, we caught a, a thief together, of all things, mm -hmm. uh, she told me that, because she's such a strong woman. Oh, yeah. And uh, she told Better. me that, uh, like, she's been through a lot because she started receiving threats because of what she do. She started receiving threats about her business, about her life. And she was like, I don't care. I just do what I feel is right, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. No, I feel that. Like, I literally, I feel that because I'm in the exact same situation where I get death mm. threats. I get rape threats. I get bombarded by hate oh, wow. DMs all the time. But that's, but that is what comes in the territory of number one, you being authentic, you being honest, and you stick into your values, right? That is, uh, I, I'm, I'm misquoting, but uh, is uh, like, life is like a video game. You know, if there is no enemy, Mm -hmm. You're not going the right direction, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But to answer your question, what, what would I do about this yes. situation in Bali? Which, yeah, by the way, I've been, like, kind of keeping up to date with it um, little by little. I think the situation, I mean, I saw clips of Mbonilu uh, in the, um, it from, what's that? Oh, close the door, uh, Daddy Corbusier. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Recently, right? Very, very recently. And, like, you, you just see the pain in her eyes. Like I nearly started crying seeing her because like you can tell that how this has really devastated a lot of the people in Bali. And I think to solve this issue at the same time, I don't think the issue is to ban. Uh, who are you? Because then Bali would, would suffer as well. Economically, Bali would suffer. But number two, sorry, who are we banning? It, it, because it's not, I don't think it's just one specific no, no. nationality. It's not just a lot of people keep saying it's the Russians. Look, maybe there are a lot of instances of Russians, but we can't just generalize and stereotype like that, right? It's not all Russians. In, in, and not it, in Italy, we had that kind of, uh, uh, as you say, generalizing, and uh, it was during before World War II when we said to the Jews <laughs> that they could, and it didn't end well. Didn't so, end well. So I, I wouldn't stop just one race or one nationality. Nationality, yeah. It's either you're racist or you're xenophobic. Either way, is really bad, yeah. right? So I and I don't think that banning is the solution at the same time. There needs to be, I think, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't think it's sanctions, but I think there needs to be incentive put in place for tourists, especially in Bali, to mind local customs and to respect yes. the locals. Yes. What that incentive, what that incentive should take the form of. It could be fine. It could be financial incentive, not maybe financial incentive, but more so like a financial sanction, like punishment. Yeah, exactly. Like, like a fee, right? Because because there's two two ways of do it. The mm -hmm. you you either um, incentivize good behavior or yeah. you punish, punish bad, bad behavior. behavior. And I think actually, to be honest, I I think I think right. Um, 
at this point, seeing how bad the situation has gone, I think you should take the latter route of like punishing bad I completely agree. behavior because I think I again, I could be so, so wrong. But for the way that I have heard it from a lot of uh, people online, especially people from from Bali that are commenting on the situation online is that they've tried the former. Yeah. And also, th this is the the uh, I I am into the expat community, you know, yes, so I, 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 I understand there's no fear like mm. of uh, of getting punished in any way. Yeah, they, they just think that they're just fucking invincible. And and also they think worst case scenario, they get deported. I'm going to get a free flight back home so I don't even have to pay for my flight. Oh my gosh. Okay. I see. I see, right? You know? Because it's like I'm not even going to I'm just here for a good time, not a long time. You kick me out for free? Go ahead. Exactly. Mm. Ah, that's so interesting. So it's because it's because it it's not like I'm gonna do one month in prison or two months in prison. Because as a Westerner, mm. Southeast Asian prison mm -hmm. is terrifying. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> but uh, if you're like, oh, so I fuck up and you and you buy me a flight? Uh huh. Where do I sign up? Actually, I'm gonna fuck up on purpose because most of the uh, bullies in Bali, the reality is. The day are in Bali because they cannot afford their own country. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And so it's like uh, you know, it's time. It's time. It's time to go home. Let me go naked on top of Mambatur, mm. which is considered sacred. Mm -hmm. I, I get even if uh, somebody like Bunimu and me and other pages in Bali put me and I become viral. In two months, nobody's gonna remember. Oh yeah, of course, of course. I think we're past the point of positive reinforcement. I yeah. think it's time we start punishing these fools. I think we should start with making it so that Indonesia, I don't know how this is going to work. Obviously, like this is way out of like this is way out of my my depth of expertise. But if we could imprison them for bad behavior, well, that'll keep them, the also that the, keep them in check. There's different kind of bullet bad behaviors. Uh -huh. Of course, there's the bullet that uh, uh, is obnoxious and mm -hmm. get drunk or or with the bikes. Uh, that, that is a thing. And then there's the, the proper criminals like the, there was a drug ring uh, mm -hmm. uh, operated by actually a Ukrainian and a Russian together so at, so at least uh, there was a word there well and also the one where I'm um, some correct me if I'm wrong some lady she was naked up on a sacred uh the one that you were saying oh that that's every other day actually <laughs> actually now is is less I remember up until during COVID, it was almost every week uh, naked doing uh, doing a photo shoot mm, in a temple yeah. or hugging a sacred tree or in a sacred mountain. Because also, like bullets, some bullets don't do the research mm -hmm. and they think that Bali is the party island. Yep. And in Europe, we have those party islands. We have Ibiza, Ibiza. we have uh, Tenerife, we have Palma de Mallorca, many islands in Greece mm -hmm. where you just act like an animal, get drunk, and then you go back home right. and you go back to your office and your normal life. Right. Bali is not like that. Exactly. Or at least there are the uh, the beach club and stuff, but Bali has, is, is an island with such a rich history and such a connection mm -hmm. to the culture and the religion and the spirituality. Absolutely. And, and, and the other idiot bullets or bullet go blocks as I call them are the one that do lean too much into mm -hmm. the fake spirituality mm -hmm. and so they go to Bali and with the pretense of doing tantra or yoga they do orgies and they do mm -hmm. uh, drug parties and all that stuff mm -hmm. yeah exactly so it's, it's not an easy fix no it's but easy. definitely that there's something that has to be done I think there's something that has to be done I think there's I think at this point the situation has gotten very bad, and I'm sure the Indonesian government. I'm sh I'm sure I could be wrong, but I'm sure they're they're coming up with ways to yeah. tackle this issue. One one thing that I heard plenty of time that I don't agree with is that uh, uh, we want to be against backpackers. the The problem is not the money. The problem is the manners. The problem is the education. The problem is respect. Mm -hmm. It's not how much I spend in Bali because some of those idiots are some of the people that spend the most in Bali. So it's not that. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that just raising the fee of the visa on arrival no. is not going to solve anything. No, no. Um, because I was also just going to say the root issue here really is that some of these foreigners come to Indonesia or they come to any other mm -hmm. country in Southeast Asia, really. And... And it's the entitlement. Yes. It's the, it's the entitlement. And in Bahasa Indonesia, nggak tahu diri. Like literally the definition of nggak tahu diri. Know your place, right? Yeah. They, and they very much, they lack that.
It is actually like, if you think about this, a, a modern way of colonization. Oh, absolutely. It's like before white people and, and European, not white people necessarily, but uh, Westerners came to Indonesia mm -hmm. for the spices and the resources. Mm -hmm. And now the, the new resource is, is fun and tourism. Mm -hmm. And uh, before they, they, they spread their, their way of life, now they spread stupidity in yeah. uh, in, in, in this country that accept them. And is it to me, it, it's weird because, of course, I'm a bully. I know I'm not Indonesian, obviously. Yeah. But having my son was born in Indonesia, been here so long, it's, it pains me so much. So I can only imagine, like, uh, Nilu, what she's going through. Yeah, especially some for people like Mbonilu, like people that are native to Bali, yeah. that grew up in Bali. I think I, I, sympath I feel like I can sympathize a lot with how it must be so heartbreaking to remember the version of Bali that you grew up in that was, you know, very much, you know, putting it generally here, a very respected place. Yeah. And now for it to be disrespected like this, no less than by foreigners, yeah, especially. Ex exactly. The, it, the it feels very. Yeah, absolutely. It, it feels very violating. That That's the word. That's, yeah, you that's feel very word. much violated. And, and the problem is also that some part of Bali now are being way uh, overdeveloped. Mm -hmm. But, and even I remember, I came here six years ago and I, and I, in many parts where I would see rice fields till, till you could see the eye, till the horizon. Now there's villas and villas and hotel and villa. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's tough because then you also think about, yeah, what about the rice farmer? Mm -hmm. He, he was working his ass off all his life. Then somebody comes and make him a millionaire overnight. How mm -hmm. is he going to say no? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like this ties to a little bit to our earlier conversation about conservative values versus progressive, mm. uh, progressive value, not liberal values, but like progressive yep. values, right? Look, I'm all for progressivism. I think that is one of the things that I am more known for is that I am one of the louder, more progressive voices in Indonesia, right? Yep. And I am a big proponent of, yes, we have to make progress. I'm a big proponent of modernization. Yes, but modernization needs to be keep, kept in check. Everything needs to be kept in check. Don't just progress for the sake of progress, right? And also there's this, you know, there's really, there's this saying, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? True. Like just because something is traditional and old fashioned, that don't mean it's a bad thing, right? No, absolutely. There are things that need to be preserved. And I think, you know, what you were trying to get at is like, I think there's a lot of, well, Obviously, like this, it's also business and capitalism getting involved, right? Of course, people want to capitalize on Bali yep. and that how it's such a hot tour, like it's a tourist hotspot. You know, there's that. But then I think there's also a little bit of this mindset of like, you know, um, the renewal of Bali, of like making Bali new and making Bali modern. And it's like, then it's not Bali anymore at it, that it lose It loses the, the whole appeal. It loses exactly. the magic of Bali. Of it, Bali. Exactly. And it, it, like, you know... Pro, pro, again, progressivism can't just be for the sake of saying, oh, we're making progress, right? Exactly. Even though that it's funny to me because I know so many people that have been living now in Bali. And when I say Bali, it's mm -hmm. mostly, of course, Changu or Ubud mm -hmm. or Kuta or Seminyak for like three, four years. And they never went out of that. Like mm -hmm. Bali, actually, the, is, is a good thing. is is a big island. Mm -hmm. So there's still many parts that are completely... Uh, overlooked by the tourists, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm, I like that they're overlooked because then they're my little secret almost yeah, yeah. as a bule. Like, because you can drive even just one hour and you're in parts where there's no bullets at all. Mm -hmm. And and I and I wish they they're not gonna find those spots that and selfishly is like th those are my spots. You know, right. those are the spots where I go when I want to be away from the craziness. Right. Right, right. Uh, but I feel like I almost, I, I don't know what it's like in Bali. Obviously, I've never even lived in Bali before. Okay. And, and like, I barely ever go to Bali. But is, is the entirety of Bali, like how much do foreign tourists infiltrate Bali, uh, Bali areas? Like, is it the the entire island no 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 right the, there's there there's these little hot spots yeah where it, it to be honest sometimes it doesn't even feel like indonesia yeah because it feels like you're in europe or in the us yeah and and there's these uh these these cities is well it started from kuta which is on 
just north of the airport and then it expanded. It kept on going up the coast mm -hmm. until now Changu and Peranan area. And then there is Ubud that was the like the spiritual um center of Bali, but then since the movie Pray Love, then mm -hmm. every every white woman in a a middle life crisis when they're to find herself and because she want to find herself they lost the magic of ubud because mm, um what i'm trying to get at is i feel like there is a level of management that needs to happen whereby i think the tourism needs to be contained in only certain areas whereas i it, think it is though for now it is for now still yeah, yeah, yeah. okay that's okay that's good that's good because I was under the impression that pretty much like the entire Bali, the, the entire island of Bali is like being colonized. No, 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 absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. Like it's being contained in certain areas. But right? in those areas, it's, it's, right. it's very prominent. Right. Because I, I don't know if this, I don't know if this borders on the line of being controversial because it maybe runs the risk of sounding racist, right? It's not coming from a racist place. I, like I, I promise. Making ghettos of bullies. Uh, no, not making ghettos of bullies. It's more so like I, to some extent, I understand the want for indonesians that are native to a certain area so let's talk about the native balinese yep. i understand the want for native balinese to have sp spaces that maybe it's not to say it's only for balinese like it's in a racial no, no, way absolutely. but like it's for like how, how should i say this it's not absolutely not touched by yep. foreign tourists Right, uh, it I'm, remains for the Balinese. I'm not people. mad at it. Oh yeah, no, I'm not I, mad at it. Actually, either. the the last uh, viral content mm -hmm. uh, that I posted was this unfortunately Italian Italian girl that went to the Purabesaki Temple. is a temple up the mountain, and they're part of the temple where you cannot enter because it's mm -hmm. a temple. You know, the, there's yeah. areas where you. And she started uh, being very obnoxious and pointing the finger at the guy that wouldn't let her oh, in. Oh, is she blonde? Yep. I know which one you're talking about. And and she started saying, your gods would be ashamed of you. And it's like... It's yeah, no. Tell her the fact that in Japan, they do similar things. Like there are certain areas in Japan. Of where, course, no, but yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. But, yeah. but like I, I worked in Saudi Arabia for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Of course, I cannot go to the Mecca because I'm not Muslim. Of course, yeah. You know, it's... it's See, Taudiri. Literally Taudiri. Know like, your place. Know your place. Actually, this is the first time I... With you, I hear this expression. I think Taudiri. it's a great expression. Yeah, you understand what it means, right? Yeah, to yeah, know yeah. yourself. Yeah. And uh, But uh, let's uh, move on from Bali. So you recently came back to Indonesia. Uh, Ooh, well, a few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago. A few years yeah. ago. Uh, do you plan, and of course, now you're having a lot of success. So <laughs> is, but do you do you plan to maybe come back to the US and move to the US or, or you're comfortable here? Oh, I'm so glad you asked this. I'm so glad. Um, fuck no. Okay. Fuck. Back to the U.S. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> oh, fuck no. Where did you used to live in the U.S.? Uh, Jacksonville, Florida. But Ooh, it was but it was uh, 23 years ago. So. It, oh, that's okay. Wow. I'm that's, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, it actually, it was super weird because it was 2001. Mm -hmm. I did one year in the U.S. as an exchange student in uh, high school. Yeah. And a uh, couple of months after I arrived, there was the 9-11 accident. Well, accident. It was an accident. Oh. It was attack. Attack. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, on the twin towers like a few weeks before it happened. And at that time, there was no WhatsApp. There was no. The, the, I remember I had to buy a physical card, then mm -hmm. go to a payphone to call my mom, mm -hmm. uh, and that was the only way of communication. It was super expensive, so we would talk two minutes every week, okay. and of course, she was terrified. Oh fucking hell! Wow, that's yeah. crazy. No, but yeah, so you used to live in Florida, but that was like back in like yeah, exactly. yeah. No, America is not the same. No, absolutely, I absolutely it's going, not. It, from from outside is is almost like yeah, they're going completely insane. Oh, absolutely. And from the inside, you also feel it that they're going completely insane. America's a dying country. It is. America's a dying country. And you know what? I, I, I'm i very careful to talk about this because, number one, I don't want it to come at the detriment of the American people, right? Because mm. we have to learn how to distinguish between the government and people of a certain nation, right? Fuck the American government, but let me tell you something about American people. American people are some of the nicest, most hardworking people I've ever met, right? Yeah. As, a so, as a social culture. Right. Absolutely. So let's let's get that out of the way. Um, the thing that I want to say is I'm very careful about talking about this because I don't want it to be at the detriment of uh, the American people that, oh, America's a dying country. And I don't want to be over here like, haha, I got out of there unscathed. And like, you know, I'm just laughing at people in America. No, no, no. I feel I feel so much. Well, I I, I guess you have the same feeling that I have for Bali. Yeah. 
Ate, ate, because ate you so. love you you live there mm -hmm. you love the place but of course you're seeing that it's going to direction it's going to shit. that yeah. is oh, okay yeah <laughs> that it's going to absolute shit and Fair. on the one hand it's like like phew i'm fine right of but course. you still feel for the people that are still stuck there right? i have a lot of friends that are stuck in of america course. and i use the word stuck deliberately because that's literally how they feel and that's the way that they describe it is that i am stuck here I don't have the means to move to, they talk about moving to Indonesia. I'm like, girl, we don't need you here. Stay there. <laughs> or like go to Thailand. They talk about moving to Thailand. They talk about moving everywhere else because America is dead ass dying. I have friends that they can't, dead ass, can't afford, they can't afford groceries. I've had friends that have gone homeless. They got evicted because they can't pay rent, can't pay for gas. There was this one video, I don't know if you saw, it was on American TikTok, and it was this girl, and I think she graduated from NYU, which of course you're familiar with. It's yeah. one of the most prestigious institutions of higher academia in the United States, in the entire world. This girl's a graduate of NYU, supposedly, or just any American higher education institution, and she was knocking door to door in New York City, Damn. handing out her resume because she couldn't get a job. Oh, wow. And she was on the verge of being and, evicted. And there's also a difference graduating i don't know in indonesia but graduating in the us uh, as opposed to italy because in italy is basically free you you pay uh, a mm -hmm. few million a year oh yeah in the us no. you go in no. total you pay billions no and in not, in not not even just education healthcare especially yeah. and that's a different topic i had to pay out of pocket i had to pay out of pocket for my wisdom uh teeth surgery i had all four removed do you want to know how much i had to pay out of pocket for wisdom teeth removal in the United States. Obviously, I couldn't fly back to Indonesia. How much? Out of pocket in total? $5,000. That makes no sense. That's, that is wisdom. crazy. That is insane. For wisdom teeth surgery. And I couldn't get, I had health insurance, but it doesn't cover dental. Tell me, tell me the fuck why. I think my wisdom teeth, I got them in Italy for 600 euros. And I thought it was expensive, which is... <laughs> Which is like seven hundred dollars right. or something like that. And look, I'm not saying I'm not saying that in a way that takes for granted the fact that I come from a, a, a so, social economically privileged background. I, that if anything, that was one of the incidents where I'm like, thank, thank God, fuck, thank fuck, because I have friends. True story. I know somebody from back in the states, because healthcare is so fucking ridiculous in the United States. He has a bullet inside his arm that's just stuck fuck. there. Because you know why? Because he can't go to the hospital yeah. and ask him to get it removed. That's going to cost like, what, $10,000 and above? Yeah, oh. I, there's people that run away when the ambulance come because yeah. they don't have the money to pay for the ambulance if they get in. I was just going to say, because you were you said you were an, uh, an exchange student, an yeah. international ex exchange student in Florida. So I don't know how your international orientation went. Also, it was like many, many years ago. Let me tell you about my international orientation. The first thing in international orientation that our orientation leaders told us is if anything happens to you, if you get hit by a car, if you get stabbed, if you get shot, do not call the ambulance. That's crazy. And everybody, I remember in the auditorium, everybody just went, huh? Because everywhere else, God forbid, if I get stabbed in Indonesia, call the fucking of ambulance. Course, I need help. In America, you know, especially in California, this differs state to state. California is one of the most just outrageously, exorbitantly expensive states when it comes to ambulance. I would have to pay anywhere from $11,000 to $15,000 if the ambulance came for wow. me. And and the crazy thing is that they're supposed to be the beacon of civilization and democracy in the world. Uh-huh. And, and obviously that is not the case. Yeah. And so, you know, but back again to my point, sorry, like we're derailing so much here, but my point is that, you know, I don't say it in the detriment of the American people. Of course. And I don't mean to say it like in a way that is kind of like mocking the American people, like, haha, -ha, like, you know, like you guys over there, you're suffering and I'm okay. Um, but at the same time, I reflect on how I grew up in a time that where the world operated off of American hegemony. Yeah where America was put up on this pedestal as like the greatest country in the world. And I remember a time growing up where everybody would literally, like if I had to cut, cut off my arm to be an American citizen, yes. right? We would do it. We would do it. We grew up Absolutely. in that time where everybody killed to be an American. Everybody wanted to be in America, right? And I remember when I moved to America after graduating high school, and I was, of course I was really excited, right? I still had this sort of like notion of like, oh, America's like this greatest country on earth, or like beacon of opportunity and just like, you know, everything, technological innovation, like social progressivism, all that type of stuff. And then you come to America, 
I remember the biggest culture shock that I had when I moved to America was seeing how America is poor. Yep. Uh, and not really? only poor, that, that you see that there's, first of all, there's drug epidemics, especially in California. And Espe a Philly as well right now. It's and really and you Philly. see them everywhere, like these zombies almost on the street and yeah. nothing is done about it. But uh, now though is, uh, is, is shifting a little bit the opinion on America. Because for example, my, my wife, mm -hmm. she's from South Africa. Mm. She, she's a black South Africa. South yeah. Africa is one of the countries with the highest crime rate. Mm -hmm. and, and she was born in, under very humble circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, when she was born, there were no running water with the uh, toilets and, and, and there are kids that died in these places where they would put holes so everyone could uh, mm -hmm. could go to the toilet. Or she's seen extreme violence, like uh, she's seen people decapitated and stuff like that. And when I talk to her about America, because as a comedian, you know, it's, it's still the dream. You know? <laughs> America is like, well, what if? Because uh, because also performing in Bali, I I'm in contact with a lot of international comedians, mm -hmm. and I and I performed in different continents. And I'm like, what do you think if I, we would move to America to, you know, to be a comedian there? Mm. And she was like, I, I, I wouldn't feel safe. She comes from what is perceived one of the most dangerous country in the world, one of the most dangerous part of the most dangerous country. And she was like, oh no, America, I'm, I'm too scared. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, no. And um, I understand why she says that because during my time living in the United States, I've had let me count how many incidents where I literally nearly died. One. It definitely, okay, one, two. Both happened in New York. Three. Was Panji involved? No. Huh? Was Panji involved? Panji was not okay. involved. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> it's not Panji. For, for once, it's not Panji's fault. I'm kidding, Panji. For once. Um, four. Five. Five times. Damn. Uh, uh, the last one, the fifth one, I, I will say it's kind of my fault, but uh, the other four, it's definitely, I've, got, I've, gotten, uh, I've gotten stalked by my uh, laundry guy, oh, Jesus. Um, and then a homeless man followed me, um, and then twice in New York, I nearly got hit by a car. <laughs> Damn. Yep. Well, but, uh, well, I'm happy you're only right. one piece. Right. No, and actually, um, see, I feel like I, like, escaped unscathed um let me tell you about my friend his name whose name is also chris um me and all of our other friends our mutual friends we found out chris got shot in the shoulder um through an instagram story post of him like in the back of an ambulance with a gaping gunshot wound just like bleeding off of his shoulder and like the caption fuck that's it. That's how that and that's how we found out about it. And then we all like asked him, like, bro, what the hell happened to you? He was walking. I know you're not familiar with LA um, uh, geography, but basically it's like the west side of LA, which really isn't that bad, right? He was just in some random ass neighborhood just walking. Um, and then he got robbed. And then so the the robbers, they were like, you know, give everything you have. Um, for context, my friend, like he's blinged out, right? So he had mm -hmm. like the 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 gold watch and like the diamonds and everything and all that type of stuff so it's like you know give me everything you have my friend chris gave everything that he had they still shot him oh wow this was on a thursday morning damn i know oh yeah. i know yeah i'm, I'm really thinking doing like Panjis did maybe I, maybe i'll just stay in indonesia oh yeah you, you know can i share can i share something um very funny bts interaction between me and panji so um at one time Last time when we were shooting together, I asked Panji, I was like, yo, how you liking in New York? Because I think Panji's been in New York for like, what, the last two years? Mm, yeah, yeah, on and off, yes. On and off, on and off, yeah. But, you know, I was like, hey, man, how you liking New York? And he was like, I don't. <laughs> right? And then I asked. Fair. And fair. then, you know, we was just bantering and bantering. And so I asked him like, hey, man, you know, there's like one experience that people that are either Americans or people that are not Americans, but have the experience of living in America, having a life in America. There's one thing, one thing that only we can relate to that nobody else, I swear to God, nobody else in the world can relate to is how many of your friends have gotten shot? That's and then Panji, and then I told him about my, the story about my friend Chris who got shot in like broad daylight Thursday morning, just walking in some random ass fucking neighborhood, right? And then Panji went, nah, girl, some of my friends did the shooting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't even know anyone with a gun. Like, I, in Italy, I don't think I know. Only the policemen. Are guns legal in Italy for citizens? No, right? It, it is, but nobody had. Like, it is if you go through and you get a license, but I don't think you can carry. So who can carry? Police only? Police. Oh, only? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see. And, and I, lived, I lived three years in Iceland, mm -hmm. 
in Iceland, not even the police had guns. What do they have? N- nothing. There was no 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 criminality. There was nothing. <laughs> like I I remember in Iceland, a friend of mine got super drunk. The yeah. problem is that it was in winter, and he got super drunk and he passed out on the side of the road. So he was getting uh, almost covered by snow. Mm-hmm. The police took him, put him in the truck, and he was drunk and stuff. They drove him to his place, uh, changed him into a pajama, <laughs> put him to bed, and tucked his bed, and then left. Oh, that's so sweet. Iceland is is just oh. it, it was at least it used to be it used to be Neverland. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. What happened then? Uh, well, I left when the economy collapsed. Like the central bank went bankrupt. Okay. But they they recovered. They, they they're doing fine. They're, okay. Uh, but now we have again, but before again, I have a very quick question if the producer allow me, because it was on the list, because we talk about many things, but I wanted to ask you one thing, because you are becoming almost like uh, the voice of the, one of the v- main voices in Indonesia of the Gen Zs. Mm-hmm. So what do you think is the strong points and what do you think is the weak points of your generation? Ooh, big question. Hold on. Kenapa? Oh, sorry, thought you were talking to us. Uh, a strength and a weakness of yes. basically Gen Zs. Yes. Ooh, that is Because Because people don't believe it, but I am actually a millennial. I'm not that old as people <laughs> think. No, I can tell you a millennial. I can tell you a millennial. I'm not a boomer. I can tell. I can tell. Mm, let's see. A strength of Gen Z. A weakness of Gen Z. Or, or how are they different, if you prefer? Gen Z a different to who? To to the previous and the post. What is the new Mille- one? Uh, Gen A. Gen A. Oh. Gen A is under Gen Z. Jesus. I know. Oh, I know. Um. Wow. Wow. Where Where do I even? What What make you unique? Gen Zs. I think. Uh, as a generation, I think our defining characteristic mm. would be. Defining characteristic would be, I think, emotional intelligence. Really? Okay. I would say. I would say. I think that's what, that's kind of what started. I'm not, you know, whether or not you agree or disagree, whether you like or dislike the woke mm-hmm. movement, that is the, that that is the foundation of it, though. It, yeah, yeah, at least in the intention was. Yeah, in the uh, intention. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. in the intention. In the impact, uh, up for debate, in the intention, Started from yeah, there, right? I would say I would say emotional and, intelligence, and it's something that really my generation it wasn't even no talked about at all. I think we were the first generation to take emotional sensitivity seriously yeah. and not see it as a weakness. Fair, fair. We're uh, the first to do that. In my opinion, it's Gen A your, or your, your your weakness. I mean, our no, weakness. you're 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 too soft. You're too soft. Yeah, so you think it's a weakness? You're bitches. <laughs> <laughs> it just, there is a there is an extent to which I could agree with you depending on the no, context. No, it's not that you're too soft. That you uh, you use it too much sometimes. It's overemphasized yes. in situations where no, it's not warranted. No, it's overemphasized when uh, when you can take advantage of. Mm. But that's human nature, you know. It's not oh, a generation, course. you know. If you can take advantage of something, you you always do. Of course, of course. I actually had this. Um, I, this was actually what I talked about in the episode that has not yet launched. It will launch soon with um, Adria Adriano Calbi. Oh, Adriano yeah. So yeah, we talked about this of like, is Gen Z a little bit too fragile? Do you think mm. we're too fragile? <laughs> Yes. Now you can say say it with your yes, chest. Yes. Say it with your chest. Absolutely. There isn't a there is an extent depend again, depending on the context, I think there's an extent to which I can agree with you. Uh, but we've seen the alternative of when you comp- you pull a cold turkey and just completely shut off all yes. emotional sensitivity altogether. That's what happened with millennials and especially boomers. But as you said before, yeah. the the I think the right way is in the middle. Yes, absolutely. But, but it's normal to overcompensate something before you making the correction. So mm-hmm. it's, it's fair. Yes. And by the way, uh, we're going to go to the game in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to plug it in because you mentioned Adriano. Adriano and Oza are both uh, launching their comedy special and they're going to be in Bali in August. I don't remember the date, but uh, I'll be I'll be opening for them. They're going to be at the IC Center. So get your tickets. So you're going to... Well, uh, get to see both Adriano, Oza, and me. I mean, I just opened, but I'll be there as well. And now we go to the games. So with every uh, guest, we have a different game, mm-hmm. uh, which I, I'm not prepared. 
I absolutely smashed the person that was before you. All oh, right. Uh, this game is guess the. Film guess by the, the cast. Okay, guess the film. Okay. All right. Let's yeah, go. I hope there's not Indonesian movies otherwise. Uh, yeah, no. If, if there's Indonesian movies, the b both of us are screwed. Mr. and uh, Mrs. Mr. Smith. Wow. I, I'm not giving you any favors. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. All right. This is the movie. Okay. This is the movie where they fell in love and after that he, he broke up with Jennifer Aniston. Okay. Nobody cares. Okay. Next. So. Uh, with Rihanna? Oh, oh, oh the, it's, it's the crappy woman version of Ocean's uh, 12. It's like women Ocean something something. No. Yeah. Damn. It is. I did that. No, I don't know this one either. See? Ocean's 8. Oh, See? wow. Okay. Because the original one had George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. That was the good one. Then they did the remake and it was like, All right. In my defense, I barely have the time to watch movies and TV shows. Oh, Titanic. Come on. Yeah, fair. Titanic is classic. Classic love story that every woman won love of a rich woman that fall in love with a homeless guy. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, That's it. What, She's been uh, in so the many. Matrix, John the Wick, uh, uh, Speed. Uh, what, what do you want? John. Come on. Oh, oh um, La La Land. I think, yeah. There you go. Never watched this one. Oh, ah, uh, uh, fuck. Ah, ah. Uh, rush hours. Fuck yeah, rush hour. Damn. Boom. Oh, damn. Let's the, go. The name escaped me. I, I thought you were too young for that movie. Oh, Jesus. I um, think I'm too young for this. I think I'm too young for this. <laughs> Who the fuck are these fools? I have no idea. Who is the it, fuck? Is, is he Marlon Brando? Who is he? Oh, the Godfather. Oh, no, damn. Wait, no, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Who's the other guy? That don't even look like... Like, put Robert De Niro or... or Somebody more famous. Like, who's that guy? <laughs> Now, now they're gonna take away my passport because I didn't because I missed the Godfather. Is the Godfather Italian, by the way? No, but they oh. talk about it. Twilight. I knew this, but like for principle, I didn't want to answer. <laughs> no idea. Wait, what the fuck, Lindsay? Mean Girls. Oh wow! You know they're making the remake, I think, of Mean Girls. Yeah, they're making a lot of remakes of Mean Girls. Next. You're a Mean Girl a little bit. I am a little bit. Ah, Pirates Curse of the, of the Caribbean. Yes, Pirates of the Caribbean. What, what's the score? Five for who? Five Damn it. I'm being nice. Who the fuck? Home Alone. Home Alone. Look, what do you mean? Who the fuck? Shame on you. Oh, this kid. He was the voice of a generation. Not my generation, I'll tell you that. Okay, he's a Thai. He's All a Thai. right. He's a Thai, so because we are in Indonesia, family values, for seniority, <laughs> I win. Um, it's fair. It's only fair. It's fair. All right. So with that said, first of all, thank you very much. No, thank you. Uh, it was a... Uh, is You're giving me hope for your bitch generation. Because <laughs> um, you are actually a really interesting and, and a girl... In, in, is that an expression in English? In Italy, we say that you have your head on your shoulders. You got a good head on top of your shoulders? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, Meaning we, I'm smart. No, that's not exaggerated. Meaning that you are, <laughs> you, you, you're not uh, only, no, but you are, of course, smart. <laughs> Uh, with that said, he's always the guest who closes the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so look at the camera and then ask to subscribe and do all that good stuff uh, that you Gen Z do so well. Yep. And that is it for this episode. Um, if you want to see more of my content, um, I would love to invite you all to subscribe to my podcast show. It's called The Indigy Show. I think at this point, literally one of the most controversial podcast shows in Indonesia. We're a bilingual podcast as well. There are full English episodes or there more often half Indonesian, half English episodes. And then there are sometimes full Indonesian episodes if I am competent enough because my Indonesian language skills are still shit. Unfortunately, I'm working on it. But yeah, um, tune in and be sure to follow me on social media. It's in the G at it's in the G, um, I think everywhere. And also you can uh, follow at the in the G show. No, you're supposed to tell to follow this program, our program, not Bullet go vlog. <laughs> Subscribe, smash that like button. Nobody and, cares about you. And if 
My mom cares. No, she doesn't probably. But if uh, if you're Gen Z, then tell me how of a bitch you think you're not, even though you are. I'm gonna be controversial. I, I cancel it, him. It's it's her fault. It's her fault. And uh, I one thing very important. I don't agree with anything she said, so don't cancel me. It's all her fault. I didn't even invite her. That's my producer who invited her. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Have a good night. Have a good day. Uh, what time it is? I don't know. Bye bye.